Oh, for grace to trust Him more, happy Sabbath family. So I'm a bit of a miracle today because uh, for some of you who are on my Facebook page, got a plea that says, I need a miracle because I could hardly talk. And it's not because I was screaming at my husband. It's because I was cooking for 15 very hungry teenagers, year 10s from Nunawadin Christian College. And uh, they had me standing on my feet all day and uh, almost all night for 16 days in Vanuatu. And I see some of my babies here. That's how much I love you. Yeah. God is good. This is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. But you reply, no, that's not the road we want to travel. Stop, stand at the crossroads. In the last couple of years, I feel as if God has uh, been nudging me. I've grown up with a father that says, Moe, don't ever forget your roots. I was born in Samoa. I grew up there for the first 10 years of my life. My foundation was laid. I grew up with a family that loved Jesus, a father that was really strict, that my talking in church meant that I would get the belt at the end of Sabbath. So I hated Sabbath. That was the roots he wanted me to remember. And so I think that because he stopped me talking in church so much, that when I got the chance to talk in church, I'm like, hallelujah, Jesus, bring it on. So here I am. And in the last couple of years, I guess, you know, God does this thing. He says, Moy, remember where you come from. Not only did God sort of was nudging in my ear, but I had this father that continued to just remind me of where I have come from. Jeremiah was a prophet that had one of the hardest jobs ever given to any prophet. So I am told And some of us have been told. Jeremiah had the hard job of telling the people of Israel of some of the things that are coming their way. And God keeps saying to him, tell the people this. There is calamities. There is wars. There are things coming your way. Tell the people this. Jeremiah continues to tell the messages of God. And he says to the people, this is what God says. In the first few chapters of Jeremiah, up to where we find our text, the messages that have gotten Jeremiah in trouble have mainly been this, God saying to the people or to Jeremiah, this is what I want you to tell the people. There is wars coming from the north. I need you to turn back to me. Turn back to me. And uh, there were a few charges, and this is our biblical context of this passage, you know, there are a few charges against the people of Israel. And it was this, it wasn't so much, well, it had everything to do with the people turning back to God, turning back from their wickedness and from their idolatries. You know, the charges that God had against the people were some of that. And it was interesting when I was doing my research and how God has been taking even us on a journey um, of certain themes that God actually charges the people of Israel of this, that the people that God chose, the people that God loves, the people that God brought up, that He calls His people, the chosen people, have become the people that oppressed the poor have become the people that were creating injustices. And this was part of God's message to the people of Israel. And He says to His people, turn back to me. Turn back to me. And in the text that we have before you, you know, they got to a certain part of their journey and and God says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I want you to talk to the people. And this is the message I want you to do and tell them. People, 
stop. In another translation, it says stand. Stand at the crossroads. Stop. How often did they stop? The children of Israel. And God says to them, I want you to just stop for a moment. I want you to look to the ancient path in one translation says. In this one it says, ask for the old godly path. What did God mean by this? I think in some translations, you know, um, God wanted the people of Israel to look back to their patriarchs. Look back to Jacob and Abraham and Moses. What was the ancient path like? What is it that God wanted His people to look back on? You know, and it wasn't just looking back. You know, God says to His people, you know, stop for a moment and look around. What's your environment like? Where are you at right now? What is going on? Where are you? Look around. And also look back. What's it been like for your patriarchs? What was it like for your ancestors when they left Egypt? How, how did they travel? What was their traveling like? So God says, look, study, analyze. Look to the old godly ways people. And so in the last couple of years, I, you know, in my own journey, it's as if this is the theme. God says, Moi, stop. Now, for those of you who know me and I know my team whom I love and adore, they know I don't stop very well. And my husband, I married, I think God is good because I married a man that uh, knows how to stop and look around. He does it really well to the point that uh, we will miss flights because that's how good he is in stopping and looking around. And my go get it, you know, ness, and it's like we've got to get to a flight, and he's just stopping, looking around, loves it. And God says, what's, what's your journey been like, Moy? Where have I brought you from? What's the journey been like? How have you traveled? Where have you come from? What's your heritage? What experiences have you had? Whom have you loved? Whom have you wanted to smack? Yes, there are times, Brian. Not always about violence, although there are times that I think it's needed. What's the journey been like? And it's been an amazing journey. Uh, to last year in July, I, uh, I've always wanted, when I, I, I guess when I got to the point when I actually felt like I needed to find someone that I liked better than myself, like a husband. I didn't pray for one, but you know, when it got to that kind of point, it was about my early 30s because I loved life too much. You know, I always said to myself, you know, whoever it is that I marry, um, whether, you know, someone or non-someone, I want to take them back to where I grew up because I think it'll give them a better perspective of me, you know. And, uh, and sure enough, last year in July, uh, you know, my dad and my mum and I and our boys, Caleb and Johnny, we, we set off to go to Samoa. And it was kind of an emotional journey for me because it kind of got to that point where, you know, we went home and I wanted my husband to see where I grew up. I think, and also just to know my culture a little bit. Poor thing, he's still learning. I think it'll take him a lifetime to learn. Um, but I wanted him just to get a better perspective and to understand the journey that I've come from, my roots, my heritage, my culture, my people in a way. And I wanted to introduce him to that because in some respect, I, I you know, I was born in Samoa, but over the years, I mean, I've been, I've been in Australia, New Zealand uh, for over 20, well, almost 20 years. So the majority of my life has actually been spent outside of that. And so in a way, although in some respect, I think like a someone sometimes, but majority of me doesn't. And so it was a reconnection and it was a beautiful thing. Look back 
to where God has led you, Moe. And, and when I did that, there were times of praises. There were times where I was overwhelmed by how God has led this girl who grew up in a little village that you need more than a microscope to look for it. And yet God said, this is the path I want you to go on. And I needed to go back to that. But I also needed to stop and look around for various reasons. I needed to analyze my environment. Who are the people that have blessed my life? Who are the people that have challenged me? Who are the people that I have loved or probably have been a stumbling block to? Who are they? What's that like? Stop. Stand at the crossroad. Analyze. Look around. I don't know about you, and some of you are probably here and are finding yourself in that very spot where God is nudging you. Or you might actually be in that crossroad and there is a need for analysis, a careful look around. Where am I? What am I doing? And where is God in this? When God said to the people of Israel, look, look around, just stop. You are sacrificing babies. You are worshipping idols. Your selfishness and your self-centeredness has reached my throne room. Stop. You are oppressing the very people that you should be looking after. I led you out of Egypt. I freed you, people. And you are oppressing the very group of people that you needed to actually look after. What are you doing? Turn back to the godly ways. Look for the godly ways. In the next part of our text, it says, ask for the old godly way. And then he says, walk in it. Walk in it. You know, um, when I first got a call, I guess when I first felt the call of God on my life, um, it was in 1998. And um, again, as I've already mentioned, grew up in a Samoan culture where it's very patriarchal in its, its, in its system and set up. And um, I also have a family that was very much about education. You know, the crossroad my parents came to was, it was either they stayed in the comfort of their home where everything was accessible to them, the plantation, the sea, you know, they didn't have to pay a rent. It was hard work, but they had that at their fingertips. But here they had four children. And, uh, you know, because they were about education, you know, they chose to leave the comfort of their beautiful paradise and come to New Zealand and then on to Australia about, you know, and it was about ensuring that their children had a good education. And so I've always had that in the back of my mind, you know, that further education was really important. And when in 1997, there was a nudge, not just from my father about getting, getting back to studying again, but it was this, I don't know, for those of you who know what it's like to get God tugging at you, knocking at your door, um, you know, I had this thought, I needed to go back to college, or I needed to just get to college, and I needed to study again. And the only thought that came to mind was to actually go and study theology. Now, we all know the platform in our context, or you know, our, our church context, but also cultural context. It was, it was something that couldn't get done or be done, but yet God was really strong. And so, you know, it was at that moment that I said, oh, I'm going to college. And for those of you who know my story, I lied to my dad for the first nine months of the year of college. When he asked me, what are you studying? I said, you know, theology, youth theology, because I knew he didn't know what that meant. I'm sorry, dad. 
But, you know, I actually used that because he didn't know what theology meant. And so for a whole, up until September in 1998, my dad would ask, what are you studying? Oh, theology. And then in September came and he says, he sat me down, he says, uh, what, what is theology? And so I had to explain to him, well, you know, kind of like Pastor Eddie, what he does. He says, oh, you're going to be a Fifeau, which is a pastor in Samoa. And I said, yeah, I kind of like that. Well, why didn't you say so? I chose to walk that path even though I wasn't sure how I was going to be received or accepted even from my own family. I walked it. I walked it. And it's been one of the most amazing journeys of my life. Amazing journey with God. And God says, ask for the old godly way and walk in it. What path is God asking you to walk, people? Family. What path is God asking you to walk? Are you at the crossroad where God is saying to you, stop? Stop. Look around. Study your environment. Where are you? Where am I with you? When you found that, or have you found it, are you going to walk in it? Are you going to walk in it? And he also says, travel its path. You know, the Bible talks about God saying, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Have you tasted him? Are you traveling with him? You know, over the last six years, this is my, this is now going to be the completion of my sixth year in youth ministry in Vic Youth. And we have traveled amazingly well. God has been good. God has been so faithful. We've traveled. We've been challenged. We've been inspired. We've encountered Jesus and we continue to encounter Jesus. I don't think we've always walked the path that God wanted us to walk. But he's walked with us despite of that. You know, one of the great things about walking the godly way is it says, you will find rest. I don't know about you, but there, there's a rest that's needed. There is a rest that is needed in our world. There is a rest that is needed for our communities. There is a rest that is needed for our families. And Jesus says, you know, walk this path of godliness and you will find rest for your souls. Are you walking the path of Jesus or is your soul restless? Daniel, you said Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And Everyone says, Amen. Is that the path? What does it mean to walk with Jesus? What does it mean to walk the path that Jesus has chosen? Over the last six years, you know, some of the things that God has challenged us was to look into our communities, to us as a church, and assess what kingdom values we are sharing with the world. Which Jesus are we communicating to the world? We have grappled with this notion. And you know, there have been times when um, we've actually tackled some issues and probably a, a couple of emails that I, I have received, it says that's not spiritual. It's not spiritual to look at issues like, are we looking after 
the people that we should be looking after. Similar to, you know, the notion when God was challenging the people of Israel about the oppression and the injustices. And I remember being confronted with that and actually being told that's not a spiritual issue. If that's not a spiritual issue, what is? If oppression is not a spiritual issue, what is? If injustices is not a spiritual issue, what is? That's been the path that God has actually chosen for us in the last six years. And it's been a challenging one where we have had to assess, assess us. Is our world, is our world hearing, hearing the Jesus that Jesus wants to have our world be heard of? Is our world experiencing the Jesus that, that Jesus wants to have the world experience? And we've traveled a bit of that path. We've traveled a bit of that. It's been confronting that path, a very confronting one. But there's been a peace. There's been an absolute peace in trusting that the path we traveled was the path God chose for us for this season of our ministry. Because there is rest. I don't know about you, but what happens when you find yourself restless? And I don't know if some of you are at this very moment. You're restless with the career you've got, the relationships that you have, the family situation you're in, the friendships you've got. I don't know what that is for you, but there is a restlessness um, the beginning of uh, when I got called to youth ministry in 2008, I got a call from a really good friend of mine that says, uh, come over to the States and um, I want you to come and work with me. And I remembered it was just halfway through the year and I was like, this is an amazing opportunity. And so I said, sure. And, and then he flew me over and I went to the States and I looked around and he says, this is what you'll be doing and I'd love for you to join our team. And I came back and at that very time, I, you know, God was starting to have my heart a little flutter towards a, a beautiful, gorgeous, blue-eyed boy, you know. And, um, and it was that time I came back and I said to him, you know, they're giving this call and I think I want to go. I actually think I want to go. And before they took me back, I actually said yes. And I said, I'm going to come, but I want to bring this boy. I think he might be the guy that I might end up marrying. I don't know, but I'm bringing him over anyway. So we went over and I, in my whole entire life, have never, ever felt so restless, restless. The whole two weeks we were in the States, I remember talking with Adrian. I said, I think I've made the wrong decision. I think, I don't think this is of God. And then you have the whole guilt and all of that that comes over you. And, and I said to him, do you wanna go? And you know, anyway, at the same time, I came back to Australia and, and it was one of those things where I'm like, do I actually want to stay with this guy as well? Because it was kind of those crossroads for me, seriously. And I was like, is this the guy that I want to do ministry with? I want to do life with? Is he going to be okay with this? You know, and, and assessing had to be done. And so my soul was restless. And I don't know whether it was about him or about America, about youth ministry. I don't know what it was, but I was restless. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. And that's a problem. But I was restless. And so I wrestled with God. I wrestled with God. And the only thought that came to mind was God saying, you, know, you actually have to say no. You actually have to take your yes back. And I did. And I slept like a baby from then on. And that's because this is the path that God wanted me to walk for the last six years. And that was to walk along some of the most amazing godly people, people who love Jesus, who wants the kingdom to be practiced right here, right now. People like Wayne Peets, Paul Holton, Neil Redman, Philip Highland, 
Mark Watson faced others. Brian Roberts, Damien, Elisa, Cara, Natasha, the people that I've walked with. That was the path that God wanted me to walk along the last six years. And here the people of Israel are confronted by God again, says people, the path that I have for you brings rest for your soul. You know, the sad part is in this text, they actually turned around and they said to God, no, we actually don't want to walk that path. You know, in chapter seven, it talks about how God actually says to Jeremiah, you know what, Jeremiah, and there's a few times throughout the book of Jeremiah where God actually says to him, I don't want you to intercede on their behalf. You know, I don't want you to do what Moses did back in the Exodus time where Moses came to me pleading, pleading for the people of Israel. I actually don't want you to pray to me about the people. They've rejected me. And, you know, for a few chapters after that, Jeremiah is confronted with these same messages and God is saying to him, don't pray to me about them. These are the only messages I want you to tell them. Trouble is coming. Trouble is coming. But it's not until further in the book of Jeremiah and we find one of the most popular uh, verses that have been uttered and quoted, especially when we go through hard times. You know, part, one part of it is in Jeremiah 29, 11. We all know that where God says to, to Jeremiah, please share this message with them. He says, it's not that I, I mean them any harm. I don't mean you any harm. I want your life to prosper because that is my wish and my plan for you. Family, we are at a crossroad in so many ways. Our world is in a crossroad. Our church, in a way, is in a crossroad. And there is a time right now for us to assess our surroundings. And my urge for you is a few layers I don't know which part of the journey you're on, some of you who are here, whether God is actually saying to you, I want you. I want all of you. Not bits. I want you. Your whole heart, your whole being. And I don't know whether that's God's call on your life right now, whether that's a crossroad you're on. And I pray in Jesus' name that you hear that. And it's not that God wants any harm for you, it's not, and, and you know, God says it to the Israelite, and he's like, it's not so much that I want you to turn to me, although that would be great. It's mainly for your own good that I want you to think about this. It's for your good. So God says to you, in the hearing of my voice, turn to Jesus. If you're hearing this, you are here because Jesus wants you, all of you. So I don't know what other crossroads you're in, um, as, as a church as well, as a, a youth group, what is God challenging you with now? And if you're church leaders that are sitting here, when was the last time you gathered as a church and, and asked this question, which is the godly way? Where is God leading us as a group of people? I don't know what that is like for you. What path is God wanting us to walk? And then he says, I want you to walk that path as he reveals it. Because the thing that's coming is, is a soul that is filled with peace and rest. I don't know what that's like. For my beautiful Vic Youth family, the team, I have been honoured and blessed to have been a part of the journey that we have traveled on with God. And so here's another crossroad. I also wanna take this opportunity to thank you. 
made it through this far. I want to thank you, my team. For the trust the love the affirmations the encouragement because we have we have uh, cast a few hairy visions and you've trusted us to walk them even when it was outside the boxes of our institution Thank you. My only hope for you is that you will answer differently to Israel. When they said, no, Jesus, we don't want to walk that path. But you're going to say, yes, Jesus. We're going to walk this. We want to walk this. Our world needs Jesus, people. Our world needs you. I want to thank my family, my husband, my parents, my praying parents. Thank you for being my backbone. Thank you for loving me through even when I can't have a coffee with you, mum. A lot. Thank you for praying for the youth of this conference. And we will do it together, continually. I'm going to pray for you and the team. And I really will be praying for you because justice is needed. Freedom is needed. Shackles need to be broken in our communities. Please, I pray that the message of Jeremiah will be heard loud and clear here in Victoria, where we stop often and look around, look around our communities. We ask for God's ways, the godly ways. And then we find it with Jesus. We walk them together with Jesus. Amen.